honestly, I think the case got dumbed down to she's showing up at the scene of the crime. You're telling me she didn't know if she knew. If she knew, then they're then they're involved. If she wasn't showing up, okay, I can believe it maybe, but her showing up is the icing on the cake. I agree, Chuckles. It was the icing on the cake. And let's get into it. So this video is another video where we go over Wendy, the queen of coincidences. Not only is there some coincidences in here, but uh, yeah, I think I caught Wendy in another lie. So let's check that out. In this first clip, I want you to check out what time the hitmen, Lewis and Sigfredo, were leaving. What time they turned off their phone, what time they turned on their phone, and what time they sent the message to let Katie know the hit was done. So even though they don't have any other locations after 9.58 a.m. for cell phone events, what time do we know that they left the Premier Gym area from the surveillance video? We see the time on the surveillance video just after 10.38 a.m. We see Mr. Markell's vehicle. And then we see the green Prius, Mr. Garcia, Mr. Rivera, again, leaving the gym area. All right, so his last, Garcia's last location uh, from his cell phone records was 9.58 a.m. when he was consistent with Premier. What's the location for his next active event on his cell phone? So the next event that we see is at 12.30 p.m. We can see here that it has traveled a reasonable distance from Tallahassee before we see that next event. And is he the orange dot here with 12.30 p.m. next to it? He is, yes. Okay. That looks around about Gainesville-ish area? Uh, north of that, yes. A little north of Gainesville. All right, so that's the first phone call that Garcia made after leaving Premier? Yes, that's the first event with location that we have. Looking at his phone records, what do his phone records indicate about the status of his phone during that time where we don't see any events? Well, what we see, uh, we see the 958 event, an incoming text, we see some events, 1218, 1219, there's two incoming calls from this 305 number, um, very short duration, and we don't see locations for those. So those calls did not reach the handset. Powered off, battery went dead, broken, whatever it may be, but those calls did not reach the handset. 1229 and 1230, we see these short codes or these short three-digit numbers here, and those are associated with T-Mobile voicemail events. Um, and then immediately at 1230, we have the outgoing voice call um, that provides location. So that would indicate that the handset was now back in service with the network. And could that be consistent with him turning off his phone after he left Premier and then powering it back on after he figured he was far enough away from Tallahassee? It could be consistent with that, yes. And then who was his first call at 1230 when he was north of Gainesville? Who was the first call that either of these Garcia or Rivera makes after the murder. Miss Bagbano. Okay, can you show that to us? That was the 1230 call? Yes. We see a very short duration. Is that 20 seconds? It is, yes. Okay. So at 1230, Sigfredo turns his phone back on after he's away from Tallahassee, and he makes a 20-second call to Katie Magbanoa at 1230. Remind me again, what time did Wendy Adelson leave her house to go on her trip to the crime scene? Let's take a look. All right, switching gears here. I want to see where Wendy Adelson was during that late morning, early afternoon time when Markel was murdered and during the couple hours after. Um, are you familiar with her statement about her locations on July 18th as far as being at home for her TV repair appointment then going to ABC Liquors to buy a gift, and then going to lunch at Mosaic. Yes, I am. All right, based on the her call detail records, were you able to um, um, determine where, what time she would have gone by the Trescott Drive area? Yes, we do know the location of her residence at the time here on Aqua Ridge Way. We do know that she was going to the ABC. This was located on Thomasville Road. Um, looking at her records, she has a, a rather lengthy voice call. It begins at 12.31 p.m. We I'm sorry, what time did Wendy leave her house? 12.31? 
You're telling me she left a minute after Katie got the call from Sigfredo that the hit was done? One minute? What? You see that's on a cell site that would be consistent with the general area of her residence. We see at 12.35 p.m., kind of in the middle of the screen here, her handset's now um, kind of halfway between there. And then that call ends at 12.47 p.m., and it ends on a cell site here very close to uh, ABC uh, Liquor Store. So looking at that, <clears throat> again, the receipt time, 12.49, the call ending time, 12.47, um, we can kind of approximate that she would have been by the Trescott residence, you know, at, at 10 or so minutes earlier than that. And what about the phone call she made at 1231? I'm sure she'll be totally honest about it, right? Let's see who she says she spoke to. And were you on the phone when you encountered the roadblock? If you I remember, was. do you remember who you were speaking to? I do. Who was that? You don't have to say the name, but just what type of person was that? Um, he was a friend. I hadn't caught up with him a long time. He had moved to England. Um, so I was probably a little distracted um, talking and catching up with an old friend. Do you know how the killers knew that Dan Markell was planning to leave town the next day? I have no idea. You didn't relay that information to anyone? Absolutely not. Did you have WhatsApp on your phone at the time? I really don't know. I have it now. I don't know if I had it eight years ago. Did you communicate with anyone on WhatsApp or similar technology to relay any information about the murder of your husband? Absolutely not. Do you know if your brother Charlie had WhatsApp at the time? I have no idea. Did you communicate with him through WhatsApp? If I had WhatsApp on my phone, then maybe I did. I know I had friends who lived around the world. At that time, WhatsApp was more of a technology you used to talk to people internationally. So. I know the friend I was talking to was in England. If I had WhatsApp, I would have used it to call him. Did ah, okay. So she was talking to her friend from England on WhatsApp. That's who Wendy was talking to, right? Her friend from England on WhatsApp. Let's just take a look and see if she's lying. Hint, she is. She's fucking lying again. Looking at um, her cell bright, were you able to see her calls that morning after she would have past this Trescott Drive area? Yes. All right. After driving by that street, the road being blocked, the crime scene tape, and police cars, did she attempt to contact Dan Markell to make sure he was okay or the kids were okay? Here we've kind of highlighted the calls that were made after that time, starting at 1247, and we can see that there are to a variety of people. Um, none of them were Mr. Markell. Did she attempt to contact uh, creative preschool to make sure the kids made it to school. There wasn't type, some type of incident at the house. She did not. Did she attempt to call 911 or law enforcement to check and see what was going on since her kids were staying on that street? She did not. She just continued on to ABC and then up to Mosaic? Correct. She called a guy named Jeff, not Lacoste, she called a guy named Jeff with a Boston area code at 1231. She did not call anyone with WhatsApp in England, because clearly this is phone records, she called a guy named Jeff from Boston for 16 minutes as she drove directly past the crime scene. Okay, are you familiar with Officer Brandon's statements that he saw a, a person in a, a red van that matched the description of Wendy Adelson's vehicle um, at the roadblock at Trescott Drive um, that day in the 12 to one o'clock hour? Yes. All right, about what time would she have been in the area of Trescott Drive when she's on her way from home to ABC? Well, again, I would say sometime between 1235 and 1247 or 1249 for sure at the uh, absolute because she would have been in the store at that point um, for the transaction. So some, sometime in that 1240 time frame. Yeah, so I don't think it's a coincidence. And I think there's a reason Georgia keeps asking Wendy about WhatsApp. I feel like Wendy and Katie were communicating. I just feel like they were. And I still think Katie is covering for Wendy. Why? I don't know. But I think she's covering for Wendy and the Adelsons. And man, I wonder what Chuckles the murderer, Wendy's brother, thinks about those coincidences. If only there was some way we could know. And that's why they opened with it. And that's why they closed with it. 
and they even gave their simple explanation, which is she couldn't help herself. And look, 99 out of 100 times, if, you know, in a case like that, I guess it would make the most sense, except that's not what happened. But I think the jury could grasp a hold of, you know, between that and the TV, they had a, they had two things that were coincidences that you really don't have explanations for. Yeah, Chuckles, the jury couldn't grasp a hold of it because it's not a coincidence. And that's why you are guilty. And that's why your mom's going to be guilty. And that's why Wendy's going to be guilty. So anyway, I hope you like this video. If you could like it, comment. If you haven't subscribed, greatly appreciated. I'm going to link up my other videos that I've done regarding Wendy Adelson at the end here. There will be a playlist. If you hadn't checked them out, check them out. Like, comment, share, subscribe. It's all greatly appreciated. And until the next time, I really appreciate all your support. And we'll get you on the next one.